Hey, so today we're going to talk about karma. The reason I thought about this is because I hear people talking about karma and I do believe in karma more so on the biblical sense where it says um, whatever a man sows that that is what he will reap. So I believe that. So if people call it karma or sowing and reaping, to me it's all the same thing. It doesn't matter. But when it comes to narcissism or dealing with toxic relationships, I understand why people would want karma because it makes total sense like for me because i've been in so many like family abusive relationships friendship um abusive relationships toxic relationships or whatever you want to call them you know and then because i don't physically beat the person up or go out and try to slander them like they slandered me then i do feel some type of way like oh justice hasn't been served so i get that but the thing is, I think we need to dig a little deeper than just saying, oh, I want karma. Because when you say you want karma, are you saying that it's okay if that person receives punishment, but you don't see it? Because I do believe in that. Because the thing is, is that I, I think it's naive of us to think that we're always going to be around that God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, is going to allow you to always be there on the front line as soon as somebody is getting some type of punishment. Life doesn't always work like that. Sometimes you will be able to be there and see what this person gets in return for all the evil that they did, but not necessarily. And then also with karma, it's like, well, are we the ones to judge when the person deserves it? Because in all honesty, even though most people believe that they're right, we're not always the ones right. So are we judging correctly? You know, like if somebody steps on my toes or something like that, or even if somebody does something bad and they sincerely apologize, you know, is God supposed to punish that person just because I have not moved on in my heart, even if I got in an apology from someone else? And the reason why I say that we need to look a little bit deeper is because why do some of us feel that we need to be on the front line to see this person punished? Is it because we're trying to, that we don't want to look deep enough at how we contributed to that relationship? What I mean by that is even though, um, and it can be tricky when the abuser is your parent, but like for me, for, for example, the reason I say I do blame myself in that relationship is because I, was a, I had a fearful heart. Even though it was my parent and she was big as heck and could have knocked the crap out of me, beat me up or whatever, I didn't have to have so much fear that I was always walking on eggshells, always scared, always frightened and stuff. Even to the 17 and 18, I was frightened like that. That is a fearful spirit. And that is something that I had to deal with. So I could walk around and say, oh, yeah, um, all these people, they deserve karma, they do, 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 do this. But the truth is, is I would not be focusing enough inwardly to say, wow, Samira, you were way too fearful. Even as a child, that fear needed to come up out of you. And I'm not saying that I deserve to have been um, abused. But what I'm saying is that abuse showed me something within me that needed to come out that I did. And my mother would say this too, even while she was dishing out the abuse but some of what she was saying was right i need i was too naive a lot of the times that's why i was a continue to fall for her abuse even though it's harder when it's a parent because you think they're supposed to love you and have your best interest but that's not always the case so she was right i was even naive to her because at a certain point, I should have seen that, yes, even though this is my mother and society tells me that she should be doing this and doing that, she clearly wasn't doing it. So it, it should have come to a point way sooner than in my 30s to see, wow, something's wrong with this relationship. I love myself too much to stay in it and to get myself out. So I think that part of that karma, even though we are like, oh, they need to get it, is because we're dealing with anger. Why are we so angry? And I think the reason why you to look deeper into that anger is that is it there a piece of you if you can be honest with yourself is there a piece of you that's angry because you allowed yourself to get played over and over and over again you saw the red flags 50 a million times and you continue to go back and back in a relationship for somebody who never said sorry 
with changed behavior because sorry without the changed behavior it's not sorry at all it's just further manipulation so what role in this did you play is this why you want to get back because you're not looking at yourself we got to start going in, you, to inward, because we're out there and we're on all these sites about narcissism, about toxic relationships, and we're getting our ego fed about how bad things were for us and how are these people so horrible and it makes no sense and all these flying monkeys and all this triangulation and they got all these people believing them and everybody shouldn't be like this and this is so horrible. But how many videos do we look at about ourselves, like how we contributed to that? And, oh, I know it hurt to hear that because it hurt when I had to realize that for myself. Like, wow, because I was pointing the finger and I had a right to point the finger because a lot of the stuff that happened to us should have never happened. You know, that abuse was not right. You didn't deserve it. But what I'm saying is, is if you want to get further into your healing, it's time to flip how you're thinking about that situation and not just watching videos to, so you can find other people to say, yeah, that sucks what happened to you. Oh, they were so horrible. Like, no. Nah. What did you learn about yourself? Because you need to constantly examine yourself. And I'm talking to me too, to see where did I mess up in that relationship? Why was I abused? And then once you start doing that, you're going to start putting all the little patterns together. And it ain't going to be hard because you're going to see, oh, the same characteristics of you that show weakness was the reason why you ended up in that. Oh, were you too giving? Guess what? You weren't just too giving with your parents. You were too giving probably with your siblings, your cousins, and everybody else. That was a trait. Like, ooh, my trait. And I had to look at that. Oh, being too much of a cheerleader and I just naturally a motivator but you can't be like that in certain environments because it's looked at as like weakness and I still do it sometimes and I have to remind myself like I'll share people's books I'll share that stuff yay woo! because I'm genuinely happy for them but see a lot of these people ain't cut like us and instead of saying well Samara they shouldn't be like that that suck grow up Stop being naive. See, is if you thought that maybe, is this why you've been abused? Because we got to deal with stuff the way it is. I can't just keep wishing all kind of bad stuff on other people. It's like, no, I got to see, I got to look at me, you know? And, oh, look, before I forget, if you haven't liked this video, go ahead and like this video, share this video, leave a comment, let me know what you're thinking. Also, my books, guys, I know some of you all say, Samara, when I get some money, I'm going to support your books. Well, look, you ain't got no excuse now because my ebook, I Should Have Won a Curtain, the novella, part one, is now free. The ebook is free on Amazon. And you may say, I don't have a Kindle. You don't have to have a Kindle. You got a phone, right? Go to the app store, download Amazon Kindle, and you can can um that get, get your um the book free and, and read it on your phone <clears throat> it's free until the 6th of june so you only got like a um two and a half or something more days left also until the 6th of june part two is original is 2.99 the ebook but it is now on sale until the 6th for 99 cents so you can go over there get both of those if you don't know how to do it without the kindle send me an email tell samira123 at gmail and i'll tell you how to do it very simple just go to the app store download kindle go back to amazon and you can buy the ebook that way and it will pop up on your phone um on your kindle app also this one is not on sale but road to malevolence you can get it on amazon as an ebook and also as paperback so what i will say people if you have been watching this channel and people you say you appreciate and things of that nature you see my cash app you see my paypal drop a dollar whatever you feel led to do or also another way to support me like i said get my ebooks or get the actual physical books that's how you can show your appreciation and i say that because when the people that i subscribe to i have left them money i've bought their books and things like that because to me appreciation is just not in words it's also in deed um also schedule um a session with me through visabook the information is going to be below and also the information for the book links is going to be below in the comment section you want to talk about narcissism abuse how to cope how to move forward please feel free to schedule appointments with me also i want to give away mm, three 
Road to Malevolence paperback. So I'm going to say the first people that email me, the first three people who email me, if you and you live in the United States, I will mail these to you, media mail. Give me your... Um, I'll let you know the winner and then you can at that time give me the name you want me to um, address it to in the book and also your name and address so I can send it. So this is my thank you for getting me over 1,000. Woo! So again, Road to Malevolence by Samira Alexander. The first three people who email me tell Samira123 at Gmail we get the book. Guys, if you know you're not a reader, don't request the book. If you know you're not going to read the book for like a year or two, don't request the book. And all I ask is that when you read it, when you do read it, to please leave a review at Amazon, Goodreads, whatever will allow you to um, leave the review. Back to what I was doing. Again, thank you so much for the subscribers, all you guys who did join my lives, all of you um, who leave comments, and I thank you so much. Thank you. But yeah, so going back, looking at yourself. You know, because we can go in one thing. No, before I go there. Sometimes people say they want karma to happen to these toxic people. But then I find out they're living with the toxic people. How, how that's going to work? Because if you want this person to be have these health problems, to lose money, <clears throat> relationships, whatever it is that you feel like, this needs to come upon them because what they did to you. You can't, sweetie, you can't be living in a basement. You can't be living upstairs in a bedroom and wanting all kind of um, evil and stuff to come upon them. Because what if they get kicked out of the house, they lose their job, they so got all these health problems and now they can't pay the bills. And you have still not saved enough money to get out on your own. What are you going to do? Are you going to be somewhere at the homeless shelter? Are you going to be somewhere sleeping under the um, bridge because you don't have wished this karma and you, and you, yeah, you got a chance to see it, but is that karma going to trickle down onto you? So maybe before you wishing for the karma, you want to get yourself in an independent state, you know, where you're not dependent on these abusers to do something for you. Because how much evil can you really be wishing on somebody and you living under their roof? They supporting you. So you, even though it sounds crazy, you probably want to be praying, praying blessings and not karma on this individual because it can mess up your whole life. You first got to be independent and being able to survive out on your own where you are free from that person before you trying to wish some evil that's going to come and backfire and roll on to you. Now, again, please do not misconstrue what I'm saying. I do believe that whatever a person so that they will reap. But I'm just saying, when you're constantly sitting around like, dang, when is the karma going to happen? Is it going to be today? Why it hasn't happened yet? What, what, what is really behind that? You know what I'm saying? Is that desperate need to see this karma blocking you? from doing something in your life, sometimes people can get so focused on wishing evil and wanting to see it that they're not living their fullest life. You, How can you possibly be living a grand life if all you're doing is sitting around waiting for some evil to come on to somebody else? You are really just allowing that nasty, narcissistic person to win because you are you overly focused on that person. When people have you around, and they're trying to connect with you, get to know you. Are you constantly just talking about the narc? Oh, yeah, this person did this to me. And I can't wait for God or the universe to get them back. I can't wait. I need to be there to see it. I need to be there to laugh. I need to be there to giggle. And this person probably thinking like, dang, how long are we going to talk about your narc? Can you talk about anything else? This is all you're focused on. And the narc is winning because they want you to be in a negative place. They want to snap, snatch all of the joy and the goodness out of you. That's what attracted them to you. They hate you for that good in you and they want to steal that. And some of us allow them to steal it because we can't stop talking about them. Everywhere we go, oh, this happened to me. Oh, this, they did this. Oh, let me tell you this story. Now, let me tell you what they did on New Year's 1969. Seriously? You're letting these people win. 
even some of the people that I deal with, with um, who um, have experienced domestic violence or human trafficking, like they're like, they want to heal, they want to do better. But it's like a way to heal is sometimes is to stop talking about the trauma. And I know that sounds crazy, but talking about it in a way you can help other people, like get in a channel like I'm doing and talking about it so you can bring other people in who are not as far along as you are on your healing journal journey and you can help them to see that they don't have to stay stuck but some of us are staying stuck we're looking like oh constantly calling somebody this is my broke phone oh did, did, did my mama get to karma yet what's going on with her is she is, is what's going on with my daddy is he sick yet is he an alcoholic yet did he lose all his money did everybody find out that uh he he really a um church narc he's stealing money is the government investigating him yet tell me girl tell me seriously what could you be doing with that energy that you're overly focused on this other person and also truth be told you may have not been as wicked as the narcissist because they like to destroy people even if it's not physically killing them emotionally killing people speaking negative words over people trying to wish evil over people which is totally wicked and uncalled for so you may not have done anything like that but if we're all being serious with ourselves we've all done something and is there a chance that there's somebody you did something to you probably don't even think it was that big you probably don't even think about it no more maybe you borrowed 30 dollars from somebody and you didn't ever pay them back maybe you forgot but i don't see how people do that you know you owe people money now i don't know now corporations corporations may be a little different <laughs> look at me get my way out i ain't gonna lie y'all this month, my um, my car insurance, not car insurance, my car um place, car payment place, ca kept calling me talking about I owed them money. I'm like, I don't owe y'all no money. I paid. I was going back and forth with them only to realize they were not lying. And I had the money, but I totally forgot. And I even put notifications on my phone. I thought I paid them, but I did it. But anyway, as far as it go with personal relationships, I believe people know when they owe you money. So anyway, there could be somebody you know you owe that 20 and $30 and never paid them and you think it's okay because you've rationalized it in your head that it, they got it and you ain't got it and they should be okay with it even though you didn't tell them that up front. You told them you were going to pay them back. But now since you've made all the excuses, they probably sitting back waiting on some karma to happen to you. You know, waiting for you to get ill. Waiting for you to lose your job or something. So that's why the thing with the karma be kind of crazy because it's like who we've all done something. Like for instance, if you if you haven't watched my old video, it's one of my first ones I made about the time when I was a fake friend. I was about 19 years old and I had done this girl real dirty and I was honest and I told it up on, on him on this channel. But that girl could have been wishing something crazy on me, not knowing that. Oh, years later, I was going to look back and repent. I reached out to her and emailed her. She never responded back. I can't blame her. She probably never got it or probably just was so mad, didn't want to, but whatever. But I eventually did have regret and repented for what I did. So I do even say, if I pray things about people, I'll ask God to judge between me and that person. And I say, if somebody tried to dig a ditch for me, let them fall in it. If they shot an arrow at me to try to come do something crazy at me, let it shoot back at them. But if they repent, then forget it. And the reason I pray like that, and at the end of the day, God going to do what he want to do. I'm not saying we got power um, power over God if we praying something crazy and wicked that he going to do it just because so-and-so Ask for it to be done. I don't believe God worked like that. But I do believe that he will honor the prayers of the righteous, uh, those that call on him, and um, against those that's doing wicked and who ain't repented, ain't asked for no forgiveness, ain't tried to do no apologies. I do believe that. But what I'm saying is, I do say, hey, if that person, if they sorry about what they did to me, then forget it. But if they ain't, forget them. And let that old wicked come come to them. But I ain't sitting around laughing, Another waiting for it. Another reason I don't do it personally is because there's a Bible scripture that I saw, and I know I'm going to mess it up. 
<coughs> excuse me, I need water. But it says something like, um, don't rejoice when your enemy gets it unless God stop his punishment against them. I'm not about to, I'm not about to laugh. Somebody, um, you know, I may say, well, maybe they reap him what they sow. And I may say that, but I'm not going to be like, ooh, ha, ha, look at him, look at her. Finally, punk, that's what you get from messing with me. You ain't no better. Who you thought you was playing with? You ain't think my God was going to get you? And some people dancing and, you know, I was <laughs> listening to a song, y'all. I didn't even know what I was singing. Like some people talking about they be smoking on they ops. They smell like they ops from the um, blunt smoke. You know, I didn't know what I was singing. And I heard something of it. And I'm like, oh, my God, that's what that means? You know, I'm not doing all that crazy stuff, you know, talking about, you. Uh, no, I, uh -uh, I ain't got no ops. I'm not smoking on my ops and, um, you know, let them people rest in peace. But some people don't look like that. But without realizing, that's the type of energy you put out in this world. You know what I'm talking about? And even I hear it on some song, F the dead ops, F my dead ops. It's like. Y'all, y'all don't think them people's parents is praying? You don't think that they talking to God about you? You got to be careful about the energy you throw out. Because I do believe that God will handle those things and he will judge. But if I'm sitting around laughing and rejoicing and like finally, finally, like I'm so innocent and great and pure. Like ain't nobody praying something against me for something. I probably ain't even no idea. Like no, then God gonna stop getting them. I want him to get them. If they ain't repenting, get them, get them. But I mean, I ain't gonna rejoice, but I'm just saying. I want him to get them, so I'm not going to rejoice about it because I don't want him to stop getting them. Get the ops, God. You get them. Not me. You get the ops. <laughs> you know? But I think we just be having it all wrong, and I'm just going to say it again and sum it up. Look at yourself. I say these videos about narcissism and toxic people, it can be good, but don't just be stuck here. Like I say, please don't think because I make these videos that I'm sitting around with people I know in real life having these conversations because I'm not. If people at my job know that I talk about this kind of stuff, they only know it because they found the link in my book on how to get to this channel. They don't know it because I'm sitting around talking about, yeah, I don't celebrate Mother's Day because my mom was a nerd. Or no, I don't deal with my sister or this or this because they were toxic. I'm not having them conversations at work. Why? Because when I was young in my 20s, I used to. And people would be looking at me crazy. And I'm just ignoring it because I'm just so full of trauma. That's, I can't talk about nothing else. If I meet somebody on the street, I'm not having these conversations about no narcissism. They won't know I had no dealings with narcissism. And then we're like, well, I got to prove, I got to tell everybody so karma would get this person and everybody and all their relationships would be destroyed because they will know the hell I did. Why do you need to get the person? Are you trying to cover up because you were weak? Yeah, you were weak. But can you learn from that to stop being weak? Oh, yeah, you're angry because you were naive. But how do you fix it? Those are the type of videos. And that's why I suggested the other day in my community section to watch some of my older um, content. You know, even if my videos, if the topic don't really move you, watch it anyway. Especially if you're trying to heal. Because you're not going to learn how to heal in every, in just one, two videos. I'm not giving you everything in one, five videos. You're going to have to watch to get pieces together. Because I can't make, a, like, if I put all the ways of different healing that's worked for me and others, the video will be too long. So the thing is, to get wisdom, you got to draw it out like you like you got to get in, um, a well and get in water. Meaning it takes time. You got to keep on searching. So continue to watch the videos, you know. A after a while of coming from narcissism, we shouldn't always be trying to look for the karma and something bad and still be focusing on them. Because you cannot be stuck. You can't be stagnant. It's time to learn about books. I tell people about the 48 Laws of Power so you can learn the type of power games people play reading the book the human nature book by robert green 
as well, learning about human nature, learning about how to set boundaries, how to enforce the boundaries, learning communication skills, because maybe you didn't stand up for yourself because you felt like you didn't have the words to say. You didn't know comebacks. You didn't know what to say. Those things will help you, you know, also dealing with the fear of not being liked and what people think about you. Because I think at the end of the day, a lot of us and uh, everybody cares to an extent what people think, but some of us are overly focused because we out here trying to clear up our name in these streets talking about no it's the narcissist it's the narcissist see that's why karma needs to get them so they ain't got no more friends because it was them that did this why are you doing that because you're too focused about what other people think about you once you get to that point you're not trying to clear your name up amongst your family your friends and nobody else then you're gonna stop caring as much about what these narcs are saying and doing to you because you look bothered you know, you look like they've taken over your whole life and that's what they want. They want you to be bothered. They want you to be, oh, oh, no, I got to clear this up. I got to say, I got, they want you to be like, they still pulling your strings, got control over you. You still can't go out on a regular date or a lunch and have a conversation that ain't about toxic people and narcissism. You can't go to work barely without talking about it. You can't be online without always chatting about it. They have won, you know? So it's time for us to fix us and stop always trying to be at the front row so the narcissist can get the hell that we believe that they deserve. You know, therapy. Get some therapy if you're overly focused on these people and you can't wait to see them punish. Punish. So you can start focusing on yourself, building up your self-esteem, learning how to fight back and stand up for yourself, learning that when you say no, then no means no and standing on that. Stop being so quick to forgive people who ain't asked you or stop being so quick to forgive people who said, forgive me, but they ain't did one thing to show you that they need to be forgiven, you know, and maybe moving on to some different type of videos, even if that means you ain't watching my videos all the time, doing something that's going to heal you because after a certain amount of time, it's like, man, you, you still fixated on them, you know? You believe you can't overcome? How you believe you can't overcome when you sitting here looking at my videos? You sitting here watching Dr. Romani. I forget her name, but she cold at it. She know what she's talking about. Dr. Y'all know who she is. Dr. Romani, spiritual whistleblower. All these other people who be talking about this narcissism. Y'all know y'all can overcome. If you look at Spiritual Whistleblower, I, I haven't watched her video, I think, maybe in a month. But last time I watched, I think she, she was just coming out with some other bush. Check, check um, old girl out. She be cussing, but I love her cussing self. Um, she has uh, books on Amazon, too, about narcissism. Apparently, she had a narcissist in parents. This woman has been able, Chanel, I think that's her real name, been able to make books and she's profiting off, off of it. I'm sure her channel is monetized. She has been able to overcome. My channel not monetized yet, but I'm making these books. Like I said, go get them in Amazon. Don't forget, I got them backwards, that this one is free as an ebook until the 6th of June. You can ha um, get it on Kindle. You don't have to have a Kindle. You can download the Kindle app. And I, this is three books. Someone who was raised abused for years, for years. A, a, a toxic friends for years not all of them but a good majority of them for years i was told i was never going to be anything i wasn't pretty nobody was going to want me i was too fat i have marks on my face i was this and this i wasn't the smartest i wasn't this but i'm making books you know I'm working with people with DV and helping people with therapy, something I love to do. I do it outside of work through my visible. You can make a, a booking with me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not allowing what happened to me to determine my life because I'm speaking something better over my life. So forget what's happening to them because I got too much happening for me. My goal is to be a philanthropist so I can get back to my city where I'm from and also get back to the Los Angeles area. I ain't got no time to be sitting around being weak. That's what made me a victim before sitting around being weak, caring about what other people doing. I'm trying to get to my money because God got a plan for me and I'm about to get mine. 
Not to prove all these people wrong. Forget these dang people. They ain't never liked me no way. The light I had in me made me different from them anyway. That's why we separated and we ain't together no way. I, not right now. I thought it was a problem then because I wanted to be like them. But God always had a stamp on me that made me not always like them other people. And he got one on you too, I believe, if you're watching this channel. So what else can you be doing instead of obsessed with the narc, letting it take over your whole life? I need to get my get back. No, you need to get strong and stop being a punk. And I don't care if you don't like that word. I said what I said. I'm standing on it. Stop being a punk. And I'm talking to me too. I'm looking right at me. Because I was being a punk and scared too long. I was groomed that way. But I had to break out of that. And even before the grooming happened, I was still being scared of stuff. Even when, now that I think about it, that's the truth. I was still scary. I think that was one of the reasons my mom wasn't trying to mess with me when she had other kids. Because she would tell me, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to stand up for yourself. And I wasn't. I was that kid. I knew how to fight, but I was scared to fight. I didn't want to be hit. You know what I'm saying? But my thing was, is that I was scary. And I had to come out of that. It was weakness. And yeah, you may say, well, people shouldn't be bullying. They shouldn't have bothered. Who gives a dang what people shouldn't be doing? What are people doing? I'm dealing with what people doing. And that's what you need to deal with, what they doing. Not what some make-believe stuff on what you think they should be doing. Dealing with what people doing. I had to get that weakness out of me. I had to stand up for myself. Somebody cut in line to me. I just like. Now it's like, oh, uh, I stand in there, excuse me. And sometimes I want to cower, but I still have to make myself stand up. And especially if you're calling yourself a person that believes in the Bible, it said one can chase, a th what is it? A one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. We ain't supposed to be out here punks allowing people to abuse us. And I, oh, and something else I'll get on on another video that sometimes I think Christians, some punk people come into Christianity or claim the Bible and they and they start talking about, well, Jesus was non-violent. Jesus, Jesus turned over the dang on table in the temple and he was known for popping off on the mouth with somebody. Why you think they want to kill him? and was always after him because he was always checking them punks. That's why. So I find that a lot of like some scary people be drawn to Christianity because they be punks anyway. And so they be trying to get into making Jesus a punk with, so they can be okay and never have to deal with their punkish ways. Like, no, you are fearful. And this is why you're so, so mad at the narcissist. But look at yourself in the role you played in it. Again, like, subscribe, and share. Let me know what you think in the comments. I don't care if you think something different about what I thought. I'm just saying, leave it in the comment section, though. Bye.